<laughs> My crazy hair and I have something fantastic to tell you. This format is not diverse. It's really not going to be diverse. We have tried everything. It's not diverse. Also, <laughs> you know what three upstart goblin gets you? Gets you a draw and lock bird to the face. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1300 ladder. Hope y'all having a fantastic day. Happy, happy new year. Your boy took a few days off to just rest and relax and actually get some sleep, as you can tell by my massive sleepy head hair. <laughs> but I've also been doing a lot of play testing in this new format and I hope you're ready to bust out your wallet because. Post Phantom Nightmare, right, which includes Maze of Millennia with Bonfire, Transaction, Rollback, and all that. If you're not playing something fire-related, you are losing the ball game. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> so, pre-Phantom Nightmare, we've, we've been doing a lot of playtesting, right? And pre-Phantom Nightmare with this new ban list, there is a lot of different decks that you can play. Post Phantom Nightmare, it basically becomes fire or bust. So... Pre-Phantom Nightmare, you can play things like Branded, uh, Runic by Steel. You can play these things. The issue that I have with this new format right now is even with things like Triple Upstart basically offering every deck a 37-card main deck, when you get hit with a Droll, it sucks. And you have to understand, granted, I'm someone who just has terrible luck in this game. Like, if anyone is going to have the Droll and Lockbird after I play Upstart Goblin, it's going to be you when you're going against your boy. It just happens. However, the issue that we have now in 2024 Yu-Gi-Oh! to where Upstart Goblin really isn't all that good is the fact that we have more hand traps than we had back in the day when Upstart Goblin was originally at 3. Because I've seen some people make that argument, we had Droll back then, what's the difference, blah, blah, blah. If you were playing Droll and Lockbird back in the day, yeah, we had things like Effect Baylor as well. But if you were playing, say, Droll and Baylor, you're playing six non-engine hand traps in your main deck, assuming that your deck is 40 cards. You have less percentage of a chance of opening a hand trap compared to if you play 12 to 15. Now in 2024, Yu-Gi-Oh! We have things like Ash, Imperm, plus Droll, plus Baylor, plus Phantomaze if you want to play that. Like, you know, there's a wide selection of hand traps. So that small percentage of, of opening up one of six hand traps, let's say you played Droll and Baylor back in the day and that was it. Now that becomes much higher. You know, when I played Centurion, I was playing 15 hand traps. So I had like, an, what was that? An over 80% chance in a 40 card deck to open up hand traps. Like ev almost every hand I had was hand traps. And like, I just won because of it. And so... Now, moving into this new format, yes, Triple Upstart allows decks like Dark World to be more consistent, Sky Striker to get your draws off your engage, you know, whatever deck you want to play, Spellbook even. But the problem is, is that let's say you don't have any plays and you go Upstart draw and the opponent goes on res roll. Well, now your turn just ends. And the reason why it ends is because if you've drawn into another Upstart, you now can no longer play that Upstart and you've lost at the very least one card in your hand. And if you are playing triple Upstart, you're probably doing a lot more searching anyway. So it makes these decks that can play Upstart actually kind of worse in that regard. Like things like Dark World, like they were going to lose to the Droll if you had it anyway. So it was kind of whatever. But now decks like Sky Striker, normally you would go like engage search and if they go droll, it's like, okay, I can't get my Shizuku search, but like I can at least, you know, do some shenanigans with Kagari, get that back. Or you can do like a link age line and OTK. But that's also a deck that wants to go second, right? And having the upstart with the double engage adds more consistency and stuff. That's cute, whatever. But again, though, if you're not playing a fire deck, i.e. Fire King, Rescue Ace, Dia Bell Star, Snake Eyes, something, whatever... You're just losing, especially post Phantom Nightmare. And the reason why I say post Phantom Nightmare is because Snake Eye Populous, and uh, to a lesser extent, Snake Eye Dramatic Chase and all that, along with Bonfire Maze of Millennia, add so much firepower, pun intended, to these fire based decks, even just Snake Eye decks in general. Like Snake Eye itself is actually kind of good, even though it's basically just a sub engine, but that's besides the point. So. 
if you're playing a deck, <laughs> even like fucking Spellbook, Jesus Christ, that deck is so garbage. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation of itself. But when you're playing these more roguish decks like Sky Striker, Spellbook, to a lesser extent Centurion. Centurion's only good if it goes against meta. Like, I'm just being honest. Um, you basically just are in an automatic losing position. Like, the Fire King Skyburn card that's basically like an Icarus attack on crack. I tried playing Runic Stun with like one of Floodgates just to see if it would work. And I got blown the hell out by Fire Kings because Skyburn is just an insane card and I didn't have Hugin on the board. So, if you're not playing something Dia Bellstar related, or just fire related, whatever, you are in such a terrible position. And on top of that, talking about spell books, so we tried playing that, right? I think it was Johnny Nguyen that posted a build. I think it was Agent Persuasion, yeah. I tried his build, Johnny. <laughs> Spellbook is garbage. <laughs> like, I'm just being honest. So, uh, Judgment 3, in theory, adds more consistency, right? And if you can end your board with, like, a secret village, a Jowin, maybe a spellbook of fate or a wisdom in the back row. Like, sure, maybe you can win, and even then, that's a big if. But judgment sucks. <laughs> Keep in mind that back in 2013, we didn't have Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is a perfect example of a card that will never be power creeped. It will never be bad. It will always be good to some degree, right? A spellbook of judgment can get ashed. On top of that, the cards that you're searching off of judgment, really outside of spellbook of fate, aren't all that good. Like, look at a spellbook deck list, right? Go look at Asian Persuasion's deck list. What do the spellbook cards do? What do secrets do? It's a rota. Okay, it's a rota for cards that really aren't all that good besides fate. What does spellbook master do? It copies secret to search again. That's all it does. So you're just trying to get more searches off of judgment. So you have like, what, a 10 card hand at that point and hope that that's enough to win. The grind game is good, but if you don't go first and end on that ideal perfect board, which you won't every time because that's just Yu-Gi-Oh!, then you're losing. And if you go second, you can't really play hand traps because you have to play a bunch of spells, so you're losing. And if you go against Labyrinth, because you know they're going to play Eradicator, you lose. <laughs> or if you just get hit with the Droll because you're like, upstart draw, Droll, or you go secrets, get master, Droll, and then now your masters is shut off. So it's like, it, it's it's awful. It's really, really awful. Um yeah, no, like, even pre-Phantom Nightmare, I wouldn't even play spell books. Like, I, I think that they just need a whole new line of support and spell cards that, like, are quick plays that are super good. Like, I think that that's really what they need at that point. Sky Strikers, same thing. They just, they really lose harder to draw with Upstart. Dark World's always been a glass cannon. That really hasn't changed. Branded Chimera was interesting pre and post Phantom Nightmare because pre Phantom Nightmare obviously was a bit better. Every deck pre Phantom Nightmare and pre Maze of Millennia is a little bit better than what it is, you know, post. Um, but Branded Chimera was okay. It, it, it still, it just doesn't compare to Fire. And then, like I said, post Phantom Nightmare, you have to play either Fire Kings, res Rescue Ace, something Fire related, or you're just going to lose. Um, I did see a build on YouTube. Someone was playing Cyber Dragons. Um, Cyber Dragons is garbage. I tried that. It's It's garbage. Um, and then, God, we haven't even talked about transaction rollback. So Labyrinth pre-transaction rollback is cute. Being able to hit them with an Eradicator is awesome. I think that that's going to be the go-to play now is using the furniture monsters to get to an Eradicator and win the ballgame. Post Maze of Millennium Phantom Nightmare and you get transaction rollback, Labyrinth has an amazing Fire King matchup pre and post Phantom Nightmare. It only gets better post Phantom Nightmare because Transaction Rollback is just an insane card. If you don't want to play something fire related, I feel like the only option you have at that point is to play Labyrinth. And that's not even throwing in the amount of money you're going to have to invest to at this point with whatever deck you play. You know, if you want to play something light and dark related, you're going to probably be playing multiple Chaos Angels. Chaos Angels right now at the time you're making this video are like 70 to 80. I've even seen some listings for like $90. So let's say 85 to 90 bucks, right? Well, then if you want to play something fire related, you need the Dia Bellstar stuff. And, and you also need Bonfire, Maze of Millennia, and you need the Snake Eye stuff out of Phantom Nightmare. So you're looking at like... 500 600 dollars because wanteds are over 100 black witches i think are like 20 to 25 um we don't know how much this stuff is going to be out of uh maze of millennia for bonfire and phantom nightmare for the snake eyes stuff you also need sp little knight for whatever deck you play because for one copy it's over 100 dollars. just one copy that's not to mention if you want to get cute and play like two or something like that and so now you're kind of inching towards like the six seven hundred eight hundred dollar price tag again not including all this new stuff coming out 
depending on how high prices go, especially if like you decide you want to play something like Triple Tactics Thrust, you're starting to get towards the $1,000 price tag, and that's not a good thing. You know, yeah, Thrusts are no longer in the hundreds, they're in the 70 to 80-ish range, but is that really something that's affordable at that point? No, like absolutely not, especially if you want to play multiple. Granted, not every deck is playing Thrust, not every deck is playing the Dio Bellstar stuff, but you get my point. You know, you're sitting down, you don't have any sort of cards available to be you. Like, let's just say you sold your whole collection, you're like, I want to play Rescue Ace. You're honestly probably spending $1,000 depending on where the prices land for stuff in Phantom Nightmare and Maze of Millennia. And if you don't play those cards, you're just losing. You know, Fire King is easier because you can get the three structure decks for like 30 bucks or so. And then maybe get the Dia Bellstar stuff later. But like you need that stuff in order to like actually be competitive. Like you're just getting three structure decks of Fire Kings, you're losing. Like it's bad. So I'm really concerned for this feature format. Now that I've really sat down, put my nose to the grindstone, put my mixtape in and made it go on fire. <laughs> uh, I'm really worried about this format. So guys... Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you even going to play this format now that you know all this? Are you going to take a break? Are you going to play something rogue? You play something rogue, Godspeed to you, because I think Droll Lopper is going to be a hell of a hand trap this format. I don't care what anyone says. I think Droll is going to be nuts. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.